Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking stick welding electrodes. I'm gonna break down the fundamentals for you so you understand why they're made the way they are, and then we'll talk about some of the specific ones that you should be aware of and how you use them. Let's go. Okay, so you can see on this rod there's that metal core as well as a coating on the outside of flux. Now, in order to see why we need this flux coating, it might be easier to start by trying without it. So I'll go ahead and smash the flux coating off and try to run a weld here. And you can see this is not going particularly well. So anyway, we'll take a look at uh, how this turns out. You can see all that brown, rusty powder on there, and it's just a big old ball of mess. So we'll grind inside and see what it's like down deep, and it's actually a little better than I even expected uh, going without the flux here. So anyway, we'll look and you can see that porosity down in there, all those little holes uh, and pits. It's like a sponge. Okay, so let's take a minute and talk about what happened there. When I ran without any flux coating, I got that rust colored dust on the top, and when I ground down inside, I had a bunch of holes down through my weld, so it's not going to be strong. That's not something we want. That happened because the iron and the steel, when it was melted, could react with the oxygen in the air. So the primary purpose of the flux coating is to form a gas when you heat it up to protect that molten weld pool from the oxygen in the air and prevent that from happening. Now another thing that you could see there is the arc was very sporadic, right? It was hard to keep lit and uh, pretty unstable. I had to hold kind of a long arc in order to keep it from going out. And there are elements in the flux coating that will help to stabilize the arc. And one of those is iron powder. Another advantage of the flux coating, or something it can be engineered to do, is to add additional metal to your weld pool. Because if you're wanting to form a large weld, you want to put in as much metal as you can at a time. How much metal you're putting down is called the deposition rate. And you want to have that uh, be pretty high in some cases. And so they'll put a bunch of iron powder into the coating on the electrode and that will let you put down a lot of material faster. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what the numbering scheme means on the electrodes. Now each electrode is named with a four digit number and the first two digits designate how strong the weld metal is in thousands of pounds per square inch. So think about it like this. If you have a weld uh, filler that starts with the number 60, then if you had a one inch by one inch square of that metal that you put down with it, you can pull on it with 60,000 pounds, so 60,000 PSI. 70 would be 70,000 PSI. The next digit is usually either a one or a two, and a one is for welding in any position. A two is for welding in the flat or horizontal positions only. Now, why would you only be able to weld in those? Well, that's because those are the electrodes where they add a whole bunch of material to be able to deposit metal faster. And so you're adding so much metal that it can't be held up if you're welding in the overhead position, right? And so you need to be able to weld it flat to deposit all that material. Now the last number will designate the type of electrode, and we're going to talk about some of the basic types, the three most common ones that you should be aware of, but that's what that number means, and there are a wide variety out there that you'd be able to find. So the three types are rutile, cellulose, and basic electrodes. Now the rutile electrodes uh, include one that's called 6013, and it's a good all-around, all-purpose rod, and while it's not one of the most popular used in heavy industry or pipe work, it is really good for repairs around the home and farm, or just general uh, building of things. It can run on direct current or alternating current, so you can run it with whatever kind of machine you have. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this runs on both DC and AC. Okay, so I have some 6013 running right here, and uh, you can see it's running on direct current, which means that the electrode is positive and the workpiece is negative. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and clean it off right here. It ran, ran pretty smoothly just running that stringer bead and got a nice smooth profile, so the slag just peeled right off. Now switching to alternating current, which is necessary on some older welders or, or buzz boxes, um, here you can see it runs pretty much the same, but you can hear that buzzing and there is a little bit more spatter that comes off of it, but it still runs pretty nice. And then uh, I'll chip this off and besides my, uh, you know, crooked driving here, the overall bead profile looks pretty good. 
Okay, so the next type of electrode that we'll talk about is the cellulose electrode. And this one is really popular in industry. The most common one is 6010 and it has a close cousin 6011 that runs almost the same. Now these are deep penetrating fast freezing electrodes and those characteristics make it really good for running open root butt joints because you're able to penetrate down through in the open root and form a nice weld on the back side of your joint. Now the difference between 6010 and 6011 is that 6011 can run on alternating current as well as direct current. And a lot of the newer inverter power sources, even though they're direct current, a lot of them can't maintain a very stable arc if you're running 6010, and so 6011 tends to run a little better. So if you're working around your home and uh, doing general work, repairs, those kind of things, I'd recommend going with 6011 instead of 6010. Now if you're running 6010 on a fillet weld, a lot of times the deep penetrating nature will make it difficult to just run a straight string or bead, and so you'll need to run it with small circles or a whip and pause type technique. So let's get out in the shop and give it a try. Okay, so here I'm running some 6011 and just to kind of set a baseline for it, I'm gonna start off by running a stringer bead and then I'll try two other techniques here uh, on this video. But you can see it's running okay, but this isn't the ideal way to run this rod. And I'm running on a quarter inch plate, but on something thinner you'd probably burn through with the stringer bead. Now I've moved to that whip and pause technique where you go forward and back and this helps you control your heat input a little bit and this is usually how I run a 6011 rod or 6010, um, at least on a fillet weld. So um, that works pretty well. Now moving on to the last technique that I'll demonstrate here. This is uh, just a little spiral circle technique and, and this, you know, again, this and the last technique are unique to 6010 and 6011 rods, but uh, you know, you can see it's, it's running pretty well. So this coupon, it looks funny because it's wet because I didn't have time to let it cool, but the, the slag kind of just peels off and after wire brushing it, you can see that stringer bead doesn't look great, but the whip and pause there uh, is, is not too bad with those ripples and you get a similar kind of rippled appearance here on the uh, circles. Hey, let me interrupt for just a second here. So if you're learning a lot about stick welding electrodes, but you want to learn about the whole process, everything from machines and gear to welding technique, after this is over, check out the video that's linked down in the description below, where I break all of these things down for you in a comprehensive overview. Also, if you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tim. I'm a welding engineer with a side hustle shop, and I make these videos to share some of the things I've learned along the way. So if you want to up your game in welding and fabrication, go ahead and click that subscribe now. So here I'm just demonstrating a fillet weld with 6011 and I'm using that same whip and pause technique to, to be able to fill it in and show how you might do that. And I'll just clean some of the slag off here just a little bit to be able to show the idea. And uh, you can see it comes out pretty well. Um, now this is a different uh, technique. I'm welding two plates together here uh, and I want to have a full uh, penetration weld where it's welded on the back and so I'll actually push my rod down in there and this rod will uh, penetrate and cut down in and I'm a little rusty at it but it's going okay. Okay, so let's take a minute to talk about my favorite type of electrode and that is the basic electrode and the most popular one of those is called 7018. Now 7018 traditionally will run on direct current, though they have a version that you can use with alternating current called 7018 AC. So you can run it with uh, any type of machine if you get one of those. Now the reason I really like 7018 is you can get a nice smooth bead with slag that comes off and either peels off or chips off really easily. So I really like that about it. Now there are a few things that you should know about 7018. And the most important of those is that it is a low hydrogen electrode. In industry, it's often referred to as low high because you can weld with low hydrogen procedures. Now, what happens when you get hydrogen into a weld pool? After it solidifies, you can get cracking in your weld that can weaken it. And so you want to avoid that. Now, this is particularly important if you're welding really thick sections or alloys that are higher strength and more prone to cracking. So that's something to, to be aware of. Now there are a lot of types of welds that won't require low hydrogen procedures. However, if you are welding with a low hydrogen procedure, you need to use your electrodes within a certain amount of time, usually about four or eight hours, 
um, of when you either open the hermetically sealed container or take it out of a rod oven. So let's go ahead and take a look at how 7018 will run. Okay, so here I'm just gonna demonstrate a little bead on plate with this 7018 and you can see it just runs nice and smooth. You can almost just drag it along there um, and it'll uh, just just fill in. It's, it's a really nice rod to run. really enjoy running 7018. So here you can see I'll just uh, chip some of this slag off here and you get a really nice bead profile. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. If you liked what we went over here today, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. And we'll see you next time.